In this video, we're going to take a look at the physical sun and sky. Physical sun and sky is a combination shading network and light that allows us to simulate daylight in our scenes. This is a pretty cool network because the way that it is connected is that it will create a directional light and automatically connect that directional light to different shaders as well as cameras and allow you to rotate the light to dictate the time of day. Let's create this. I'll go to my render settings and under indirect lighting we have physical sun and sky. We'll choose create. Notice as soon as I do that this of course updates but then down below we can also see that final gather was checked automatically. In order for the physical sun and sky to operate final gather must be turned on. So we'll close out our render settings and now we have two nodes over here. One is the MIA physical sky node, and then another node, which is the sun direction. This node is actually a directional light, and we can see that just kind of peeking through our street. We'll switch to a different view. Let's create a perspective one there. And we'll find that there's our light. I'm going to select that directional light and scale it up just so that we can see it a little bit better. And we'll rotate that just slightly. And I'll come back to my render camera here, my perspective camera. And with that physical sun and sky activated and connected, I'll choose to render. And now this is utilizing final gather. We can see those final gather preview tiles. Those preview tiles are nice as we watch, especially when our render time gets extensive. We can look and look at those tiles and say, I don't like what it's rendering. And we can hit escape to cancel the render before it actually finishes. That can save us a lot of time. So in our preview here, we can see that the directional light, which was located behind our buildings to the left, is casting a nice shadow across our city. I'm going to grab that directional light and let's save this image. We'll select it, and I'm going to rotate it further. Let's rotate it all the way, and you can see those large arrows in the direction that they're pointing. But I'm going to rotate it just so it's right there. And what that's doing is leveling that directional light off so it's kind of at the horizon line. This is changing the time of day. So every time I rotate that directional light, we're changing the time of day. And now we're looking at more of a dusk time frame. I'll re-render, and immediately with those preview tiles, we can see that it's much darker, and even off in the background behind the building that's directly in front of us, we can see that the sky has changed color, and this could be either early morning or dusk, and we get some really nice long shadows there. Let's rotate it back. And we'll go for more of a midday kind of a look. And we'll render this scene again, getting back to that afternoon time period. Now what we want to take a look at now is how we can control the shadows. So as it finishes rendering, we can see that we're getting somewhat of a hard shadow there. Often we want to go in and change those shadows and make them softer. So let's keep that image. And I'll click on my physical sky node, and this node is attached directly to my sun direction node and part of my physical sun and sky network. And as we go through here, we can see all of the different types of connections. I'm going to copy that tab so we can see it a little bit better. And at the very top, we have a multiplier. And that multiplier is going to affect the sky. Again, this is our physical sky node. Our sky node, as you can see, there's no shadow options that are inside of here. And this is going to just directly affect what we see in the background. You can tell how it kind of goes hazy there. Well, we have a haze parameter. I'm going to close that. And let's see if we can find it. There we go. We have our physical sun. And still not quite the node. There we are right there. So let's copy that. 
And we'll copy this so we can see it a little bit better. And here, under the physical sun, we have our shadow parameters. Now notice that these are all locked out here. It's because they have connections, and those connections are going back to the directional light and to the other parts of our shading network. What we're after though, again on our physical sun, is we want the shadow softness. Let's take that up, we're gonna go kind of extreme here, and we'll take that up to 20, and we will just do a regional render here, just of those shadows. That should render fairly quick, and now we get a very grainy looking shadow, but it's a lot softer. And it's grainy because we're only doing a sample of eight. When we increase the number of samples, it'll increase the quality of the look of our shadows. And now they're not so grainy. We could even probably go a little bit higher on those samples. But these are really soft shadows as well and not very realistic. But just so that we can take a look, shadow softness, if we raise that value, it will feather that shadow out. And with a low quality, we're going to have to increase the number of samples in order to achieve a nice look.